Hey, and welcome back to the channel. I am here because I want to talk about a subject that I just love. It's really the love of every credit card connoisseur, and it is points. But we will get into that after my co-star does her thing. Welcome back to my dad's channel. If you're new here, make sure to click that like button and subscribe, and don't forget to share. Now you hear about points all the time, and they're normally combined with miles. So you hear points and miles. The terms are interchangeable depending on the issuer, but they all function the same way. So now you'll hear about how to value points. What's your cent per point value to equate it to money? Because normally you're not gonna get a dollar per point value, but if you do, let me know and I will apply for whatever it is gives you that. But here's the thing, you will hear about the value. When is a great time to get points? How do you get the most points for the smallest investments? All of these questions have been posed and there are countless YouTube videos about points and how to earn them, the best way to earn them, how to maximize them, how to optimize them. I've even made some videos myself about it. But here's the thing, let's just take this walk and let's figure out some of the questions from beginner and maybe we'll get a little more granular about points. So what's the point of points? So to begin, we have to define a point. Points are basically currency. They're issued by credit card issuers, credit account issuers, and also by loyalty programs and other non-credit issuers. In their truest form, they're simply currency. They're awarded to you for loyalty. By using a firm's products or services, they will give you points that you can then turn around and apply for free goods and services. That's the most general definition of a point. So there are two types of points in this game. There are really only two. Uh, you got, you have some one-offs, but we're not worried about that. The first one are proprietary points. And the second are transferable points. I like to call them convertible points, but you know, either way, terms are interchangeable. So first thing, proprietary points. Proprietary points are the ones that uh, people kinda they don't really have as much fun making videos about because as the word pretty much hints at, they're proprietary. In other words, they are for one goal. That's it. There's nothing transferable. There's nothing convertible in some cases, and we'll get into that. But the fact is the proprietary points are normally issued by one company and you can only spend them on their goods and services. That's why it's proprietary. They own the points, they own the ecosystem. That is it. They don't let anybody in or out without you know considerable grief. So those are your proprietary points. Now, examples of those are gonna be like Hilton Honors points, uh, IHG points. You see the hotels have them, Delta Sky Miles, airlines have them. And in some cases, uh, jewelry stores will have them. You can earn points, like Kohl's Cash is another one. So those are just some ideas of proprietary points. So now there's a little asterisk here. In some cases, depending on the issuer, what they will do is actually allow you to transfer those points out. Now, I know this defeats the definition of them, but these are actually in one-off cases. One of the prime cases is actually Marriott, where you can trade Marriott points to airline carriers in order to get flights. But here's the downside to that. Because they are proprietary, because they are made to operate in one ecosystem, be warned that your transfer rates will be terrible. You will have to have a mountain of Marriott points to get what you can get anywhere approaching the equivalence of what you can get using a transferable currency. Now, speaking of transferable or convertible, I'll just call them convertible currencies from now on. Now, speaking of convertible currencies, let's just start with the widely known ones, the best known ones, and those would be Chase UR points, American Express MR points, City thank you points and Capital One miles. And now built points are starting to really, you know, elbow their way into the game because built, although they've go they're going through some changes, is really starting to stand out as a points ecosystem. Now, why are these things called convertible? It's because these points can actually be converted to other points and other ecosystems depending on the travel partners that are associated with the issuer. So how does this work? If you have American Express, you have at least 17 options to convert your MR points into other carrier's points. Like you can convert your MR points to 
JetBlue points, if you like flying JetBlue, or Emirates points, or Hilton points, or Marriott points. So that's how they work. That is why they're called convertible currencies. You have choices and options that you can use to make these points very, very valuable to you, especially in the case of Chase. Chase's claim to fame, the thing that you will hear them synonymously mentioned with is Hyatt. You will not hear a Chase fanboy talk about Chase UR points and not hear Hyatt in the very next sentence. They have the World of Hyatt program, which is one of the most valuable, if not the most valuable hotel proprietary currency that there is on the market. So think about that. If I can earn chase points at a higher speed than I could by staying at Hyatt's, which is very cost prohibitive, and I can rack up a bunch of chase points and simply convert them to Hyatt points and still get all the benefits and goodies and giveaways that I would be by being an Uber Hyatt loyalist and spending a, a kajillion dollars sleeping at their hotels if I can find them. That's pretty much how the equation balances out. You want to earn your convertible and turn it in to the program that you like. But in some cases, you can actually use convertible currencies as top offs if you are also a member of the loyalty programs that their travel partners have. So convertible currencies really are a lot more nuanced than people will let on. Chase points are not just for Hyatt. You can use them for quite a few things. I've actually used them for British Airways in order to get a 9.2 cent redemption recently to get some Qatar Q Suite tickets. So that pretty much wraps up the who's and the what as far as points are concerned. So as a summary, they're a currency. They are what's called a fiat currency, like US dollars. They're literally only as valuable as the confidence that you guys place in them. They're not backed by anything except for a promise that we'll give you stuff if you give it to us. Does that mean they can't change the price? They can change the price wildly and a lot of the credit card issuers and their travel partners reserve the right to simply shut the program off because they are trading you tangible products and goods and services based on loyalty, which is not really quantifiable. So that is just something that you need to think about. And also, we find out that they are a currency, but not all currencies are made the same. So they are also fully transferable between travel partners or you might be locked into a certain ecosystem. And one addition to that is that also, speaking of currency, they're so closely related to currency, even cash back cards will actually give you points that you can then exchange for hard cash if you don't have their proper gateway card. Chase is yet another example of this with their Sapphire cards. So if you have their Freedom cards, you don't earn cash back in the conventional sense. You, earn, you still earn Chase UR points, but you can't use their travel partners unless you have a Chasing Business Preferred, a Sapphire Preferred, or the Sapphire Reserve. They use those as gateway cards in order to make those more tantalizing to further get more value out of your points. So we did the who's and the what's. Let's get into the when's, the where's, the why's, and the how's. So let's attack it differently. So how do we get the most points? Well, simple. There are actually a couple of ways. First up, one of the best ways, the best ways, period, to get points is referral bonuses. To be honest with you, with a referral bonus, you get an influx of points by literally doing nothing. By being a YouTube guy and telling people, hey, look down into the description there and use some of my referrals if you really want to help out the channel. They're totally free for you. You've heard that line a lot. But by the way, actually look down in the description. This is going to be like the one time I'm actually going to remember to put them down there. But in any case, referral bonuses are the greatest way to get points because companies are already thanking you for your loyalty. And if you bring more people into the stable, they will thank you even further. But as an aside, you might want to look out for the 1099s because that means they put you on the payroll. And, you know, I have a whole other video about that. So you can check that out. Now, the second best way to get points is sign up bonuses. Now, you might think because sign up bonuses come with so many large record high points bonuses, why wouldn't they be first? Well, the thing is with a sign up bonus, you actually got to spend money. With a referral bonus, you just got to be a decent guy who, you know, shoots videos in his house and 
you know, looks directly at the camera. So the thing with the sign up bonuses is for a preset amount that you spend with an issuer, they will then give you a large cache of points in addition to whatever points that you accrue. Any credit card issuer, any credit account issuer that gives you a sign up bonus, I am telling you now outside of the next category, it's gonna be the best return on spend you are going to get period, even the sucky ones, even the terrible sign-up bonuses, still normally beat the multipliers and or optimization tools that the credit card issuer supplies you with the card. Now, another great way to get points, how to get them, is promos. Promotions are rampant in this game. So for instance, just tonight, I was looking at Marriott, and if you want to buy points, you will actually have a promo where they will give you 40% as an addition, so, you get 140% of the amount of points that you would normally buy for X amount of dollars. That is a promo. Uh, there's another promo, like Hilton runs one, where if you stay 10 nights, you get 10,000 bonus points. Just this extra loyalty, hey, thanks for spending your money with us. So promos are always a great way to raise your return on spend, and you can utilize those, especially if promotional programs run in concurrence with programs that your issuer is offering, or there are other portals that you could be using. Shopping portals is another one. I would kind of include them in promotions as a tool to up your points accrual. You can actually use those to stack in order to get as many points as you possibly can. So promos are a great way to get them. So the last way to get points is one of the most taboo, and to be honest, one of the least talked about ways in credit card, YouTube, financial, YouTube, period, point blank. Most people don't even know you can do this, is you can buy them. Yeah, you can actually buy points. Now, devotees of TPG and other sites that have aggregate point values, they kind of will shy away from this because there's always the idea that a Marriott point will always be 0.8 cents. You know, 0.8 cents per point. You know what I mean? That's their value, so you shouldn't pay any more than that. Or uh, Hilton points are half a penny a point, so if you pay more than that, you're, you know, they're, 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 they're robbing you or what have you, well, you can still buy them. Now, here is the wins that I was talking about. When do you buy points? So take it from me, I bought points. I have, I have no problem admitting it. And even if I've bought at half a penny or even more, one of the best ways I've utilized to buy points is actually to top off a redemption that I'm doing. So if you have a 50,000 point redemption that you need to do and you got 40,000 points, you better go buy those 10,000 points because even if you pay at or a bit above the aggregate value of that point, you are still getting a great return on spend because you already have so much skin in the game, it's like you're just throwing a couple of dollars at it. So that is one of the best ways that I have found to buy points. Another one is when they have what? Promos. In some cases, you have issuers that will match you point for point. So if they want to sell you 100,000 points, they'll sell you 100,000 points and then throw another 100,000 on top of it. That is also a great way to defeat one thing that a lot of people also don't talk about. And that's the fact that issuers, even though their points get dragged through the mud, there are some issuers that will actually put a cap on how many points you can buy a year. So if these points are near worthless, why then are they capping them? Wouldn't they just really just let people just buy them, especially if it doesn't really harm the bottom line? I don't know. That's more of a economic conversation that we can have later. But the fact is, is that you can buy these points on promo and you can actually bank them for a great redemption that you have or top off. Buying points could mean an extra day on your vacation. So, okay, you spend $450, you get... 60,000 points and that's the difference between coming home one day and another and you've paid the rest of the stay for your hotel or what have you in points really once you spread that over is it really that bad I would say no but that's just me because I'm gonna do what I want to do so I am not terribly addicted to following Semper point value to the letter because sometimes you have to weigh the experience against it. But buying points is actually, it's a pretty decent way to get points because you know exactly what you're getting. So now here's a couple pro tips. Actually, they're not even pro tips. They're just regular tips 
First and foremost, join every loyalty program you can get your hands on. Make up a dummy Gmail address if you don't want the emails, you don't want the marketing, that's fine. But the vast majority of these programs are free, <laughs> period. I've met people who've flown back and forth on Delta, this and that, and they're not a SkyMiles member. They're missing out on, well, just everything. I know people who have actually stayed in hotels weekend after weekend after weekend. Hey, I got a party. Hey, I want to hang out with my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my this, my that. And I just like hotels. I like the serenity. And they're not a member of the Hilton Honors Program or the Bonvoy Program or the Hyatt Program. And these are people who are literally weekend warriors. These programs are free. You, they're not going to call you. They're not going to be that nuisance. You may get some emails here and there, but either way, make up the dummy account. Join every program you can get your hands on. You never, ever, ever know when your phone number may trigger a membership and get you something that you weren't even expecting. Next thing, do not hold on to points. I've said it before. I will say it again. I don't hold a point more than a year. I don't, I don't care what it is because... Just like we were talking about earlier, there's a devaluation. Inflation is a thing. It's a real thing that is just, it's just a part of life. So if it affects regular currency, it's going to affect points currencies as well. So for me, my points in 20, 20, uh, 22, they're not going to give me the same value in 2023. Do not hold on to points. They are very much so victims of inflation. They can be devalued at a moment's notice. A program can be shut down completely. So when you earn these points, hoarding them is absolutely pointless because what you can get for them in 2024 will not be the same value that you will get in 2030. That is just a matter of fact, a matter of course, and a matter of life. If you are going to hoard points, I would challenge anyone who is hoarding any points from any ecosystem. If you do not have a redemption, that is in place within 365 days, hoarding those points are abs it's just a bad idea from the beginning to the end. Just don't do it. It's, it's just not gonna be worth your while. I've literally never seen anything get cheaper, ever, like ever. Next tip. Now we all know having a player two ups your points game because you have literally two things happening at once. You can double your earning capacity but here's the thing. Let's say you are a credit player and you meet another credit player and you guys come together, form a great union. The thing is, is that a lot of people don't know that in addition to points, a lot of perks that are associated with loyalty programs, including said points, are transferable amongst members. Remember that when you come together, it's one thing to earn the points, but who's going to do the redemptions? Under whose account? How are you going to transfer these? My wife and I actually transfer chase points back and forth. She actually earns way more chase points than me, and she has had some subs that we've literally saved because we're trying to put this thing together. So she just calls chase and transfers them to me, and I do my redemption magic. So remember that in addition to points, other perks and benefits can also be fully transferred. Like for instance, the companion ticket on the Delta Amex Platinum card or the Delta Amex Reserve card, those companion tickets are fully transferable to someone with a Sky Miles account. They don't even have to have the credit card. So yeah, that's a thing. So remember, transferability, even in proprietary ecosystems, between people who are in the same household, people who have a trust for one another is also a thing. So that way you can maximize the use of these points. Another thing, be subjective. It, I get it. You wanna maximize your Semper point. And I mean, everybody wants to get the most value, but understand value isn't always about Semper point. And sometimes it's actually the experience that really means the most. And maybe even taking a lesser Semper point value to open someone else's eyes to the fact that earning points and deploying them with great skill and efficiency can be huge and can lead to once in a lifetime journeys and experiences. So those are just my tips that I wanted to add, but this has been all about points. It's just the lifeblood of this community. We love talking about them. We love spending them. We love bragging about them. So with that, I'm gonna do my pointy thing here. 
so you can see some of the other videos I've made for beginners and intermediate people. And with that, I hope you have a great day.